Vancouver Island was one of the great centers of logging and lumbering during the 1930s. There were many small towns, but particularly the Cowichan and District was one of the most important for its great lumber industry that uh, surrounded the whole area. You didn't have to go very far from the uh, city of Duncan before you came to some of the logging camps. The new chainsaws were beginning to come in and a lot of the uh, back breaking, heavy push and pull work of the old Swedish fiddles was now giving way to newer mechanical saws. Men still had to do a lot of the hard work. Logs were generally butt by, uh, by a bucker, and sometimes it took the greatest of skill to cut a log from the bottom up, resting the saw on the handle of his axe, so that when the log is finally cut through, it would just break away cleanly instead of splitting and binding a saw. Now the uh, interesting part about logging, the really thrilling part, of course, is the uh, the moving of the logs, the yarding of the logs from where they lie in the bush after their butt to bring them into one central point where they're loaded on the railway cars. You notice that great big block with chokers on it turn of logs. The big block is riding on a skyline. And here a big turn comes in and is dumped down at the foot of a spar tree. Notice guy lines. The terrific amount of rigging there is to a spar tree, which is really a big tree growing and has been topped. And down below it becomes, uh, down below, is the center of all the main operation, bringing the logs in and loading them out and transporting them down to the sawmill or down to the salt chuck. Men worked very, very hard. They were able to pick up these heavy tongs, throw them on the log. The first log on one end, the second on the other, on the other end of his tongs. And then with a big steam donkey, they're just thrown in the air like they didn't weigh anything at all. A log weighing several tons. They'd just be tossed and thrown on a car, and everything was done high speed. There were no hard hats in those days, either. This is a uh, engineer on a steam donkey, one of the yarding machines, one of the steam yarding machines, which in the late 1930s, we were just beginning to give way to the newer gas machines. The prince in the logging camp, if you can call him that, was the high rigger. His job was to select a suitable tree for a spar tree in the setting and then climb to the uh, top of the tree or go up 150 feet and then take off the top. On his way up, of course, he'd have to take off branches. He'd wear belt and spurs. And just in case you wonder, that he might cut through his own belt. The uh, belt has got a steel core, so he can't do that. But as he went up, he had to take the branches off the tree and uh, leave it like one tall flagpole. Sometimes on a windy day, this is a very dangerous thing to do. But uh, the men got very, very skilled at doing this. And very few men that I have known have ever been hurt while they've been topping a tree. The man will work on one side of the tree and cut a notch in for an undercut, and then he'll go around the other side. And it takes quite a bit of work to cut through a tree that high off the ground when it's about, still about 20 inches in diameter. Now, if the wind doesn't, 
uh, pick up and swirl around just when he's ready to go through. There will be no trouble, but if the wind gets up and a gust blows that top the wrong way, then you might have a little bit of trouble. Now look at that tree, how it swings and how it rocks. Look at the axe, how it goes right over his head, swinging on the end of that rope. Then after the top is gone and the man's ready, he may sit on top and take a little rest, and then back he comes down 150 feet down to the ground. High riggers naturally were fairly young men, daring type of men. Got a great thrill out of their work. They not only had to cut the top off, but they had to rig the tree, put up the guy lines, and hang the big blocks, you see. The change from uh, steam to gas was taking place in the late 1930s. You see the block there that uh, is pulling that turn in, the line's going right up to the top of the spar tree and then down to this gas-driven donkey. Now another smaller machine is loading these logs on a truck. The logs have been preloaded while the men were waiting for the truck to back in. And when the truck backs in, the load is dropped very carefully right on the truck itself. Working conditions could be very muddy, very sloppy in the winter time. In order to get away from that, some of the roads were planked, which made it practically a wooden railway. These small trucks that were used in the 1930s gave way later to very much bigger trucks and very much bigger loads. And uh, gasoline gave way to diesel, so that uh, practically all the logging trucks today are diesel driven and not, not by gas engines. After about a seven mile trip on this particular logging road, the uh, two of the trucks are now swinging around the sawmill where there's a small man-made pond, and it only takes a minute to just knock out the cheese blocks. And away the logs roll off the uh, bunks of the truck and fall into the pond. Many of the sawmills had an endless chain device for taking the logs up into the mill. In this case here, the logs are being pulled up with a, a line and a choke around it. Then when they arrive on the log deck, they roll down onto a log carriage, which takes the logs and puts them through the circular head saws. There are two saws, uh, one a bottom saw and one a top saw, each with a diameter of 60 inches. After the uh, camps, as we call them, or planks are cut off the, uh, the log itself, it goes through an edge. You have the bark taken off the edges. Then they go through various trim saws where they're trimmed. Everything at high speed and, and everything with a lot of noise. Many mills use a steam crane or a movable crane for lifting up sling loads of lumber, putting them either on a dock or loading them on railway cars. But everything means action. Everything is moving continuously. As fast as the lumber is made, it has to be moved out somewhere. Another byproduct from sawmills, of course, was fuel. During the 1930s, nearly all the small towns of Vancouver Island used sawdust, not only in their furnaces, but burned in their kitchen stoves. And in the larger towns, Victoria and Vancouver, enormous amounts of slab wood was used for heating homes. Lumber moved continuously by either railway trains or by trucks. Thank you.
Thank you.